ना देश लोवा लोब बैनो नु देश मागे मेरा टाई सुंदर बल नु मैन सकी किरा पाय ना देश लोवा लोब बैनो नु देश मागे मेरा टाई सुंदर बल नु मैन सकी Buddha visited Sri Lanka several times. However, Mahayana has become as the first holy city in this country because Lord Buddha visited it first with the invitation of Sumana Salmon Devi. <laughs> The major income of the people living in these areas is received from agriculture. These people are busy especially at the planting period and harvesting period which limits to maximum of two months period leaving a period of at least two months in between. The farmers are mostly idle and during this period. In new generations people are more educated and have vast knowledge and skills related to self-employment opportunities. To enhance and promote self-employment opportunities one of the major infrastructure facilities they needed is reliable and good quality electricity supply in their area. Construction of 63 MVA grid substation with six distribution feeders and two generator feeders at Mahayangana is one of the top priority infrastructure. Project launched by the Transmission Projects branch of Salon Electricity Board. The project is managed by the project manager and his staff of the Office of Augmentation of Grid Substations and Renewable Energy, rejects under the supervision guidance of Deputy General Manager, Transmission Projects, an additional General Manager, rejects of Salon Electricity Board. The construction work is handled by the consortium of LTL projects, Private Limited and Mitsubishi Corporation Japan on turnkey basis. This project was funded by Asian Development Bank and the loan is granted through. The total project cost for this substation is Sri Lankan rupees 178,921,960.49 and USD 3,666,060.58. The project land is situated at Dahigala, facing Dambarawa weather. The land area is around 5 acres and surrounded east by Dambarawa Weather Road, south and west by the land belongs to Salon Broadcasting Cooperation and North. The project is commenced in November 2010 and completed in November 2013. It took a significant time for land preparation because the original land consisted of a steep slope from west to east and a huge rock in the middle of the land. The land was finally prepared for two steps. Top step is used to build a control building and generator room and watch huts. The lower step is fully used to build a switch yard.
start of casting equipment foundations at Switchyard was critically delayed. However, construction of equipment foundation was completed within a very short period of time to the expected quality and strength as a result of proper planning and cooperation between CEP and contractor staff and workers. Both 132, 33 KV, 31.5 MVA power transformers. Usually these are the most expensive equipment in the substation and are imported from a reputed transformer manufacturer called PALS, Indonesia. All the 132KB and 33KB disconnectors are purchased from a well-known manufacturer Coelm, Italy. All 132KB circuit breakers are purchased from ABB, Sweden. All instrument transformers such as 132KB and 33KB current transformers, voltage transformers and 33KB circuit breakers are from Crump and Greaves Limited, India. Auxiliary Inerving Transformers are purchased from Lanka Transformers Limited, Angolana Sri Lanka. All equipments and steel structures are properly earthed through underground earth mesh provided. Also overhead lightning shield wires are provided to protect outdoor equipment from external lightning strikes. Switchyard premises is lighted up by providing flood and street lights, which are automatically controlled through photo cells. A single story control building is constructed with all control facilities and other facilities to operators who are on duty. The total floor area of the building is 2,000 square feet. The entire building is fully air conditioned except the battery room and store room and rest room. However the rest room is ventilated through fans. Exhaust fans are provided for battery room, store room and toilets. Building floor is tiled except battery room and store room. Raised floor tiles are laid in control, protection panel room, auxiliary room and operator room. 
rod system is introduced to protect the entire control building from lightning strikes. The fire detection system is commissioned inside the building and connected to a substation automation system to give a common alarm to the operator. Fire panel was fixed in front of the operator's desk so that the operator can attend the panel quickly and find the fire zone. Portable fire extinguishers are provided at many reachable locations for easy use if a fire occurs at any location within the building. Fire doors are fixed at locations where necessary. Exit sign boards with backup power are also hanged at many locations to show easy evacuation routes. Auxiliary supply to the substation is taken from one of the two auxiliary transformers installed at switchyard at a time and standby supply is taken from the standby diesel generator installed at car park. However automatic emergency DC lighting system is also provided with limited lighting points inside the building to operate when none of the auxiliary supply systems are operative including stand by diesel generator. This substation has storage battery systems in both 110 volt DC and 48 volt DC. The 110 volt DC system is used for switch gear tripping and closing duties. Alarm and indications and emergency lighting. The rating is higher than 200 ampere hours. Powering up of communication and SCADA equipment is done by 48 volt DC system and has a capacity of 100 ampere hours. Control and protection functions for all equipment are provided through GE relays manufactured in Canada. Such relays are wired and assembled in control and relay panels manufactured by GE India. The substation system is designed according to IEC 61850 protocols. This system comprises full station control, monitoring and communication functions. It has a communication gateway to National Control Center. Substation automation system, dual, consists main operator station and engineering workstation. One of the station computer shall operate the system in the online state while the other access standby. The standby computer continuously updates and shall take over the SA system duties when main operator station fails. The system is capable for including future extensions too. This substation is proposed to energize through newly constructed 21 km long, 132 kV double circuit transmission line from Renton Grid substation to this substation. Construction work of this transmission line was started in January 2010. The total estimated cost for construction of this line is RS 525 million, funded by Government of Sri Lanka. The line was constructed by the staff of PMAGSAREP, French under DGM, transmission projects of Salon Electricity for it. The line start from Rentu Grid substation crosses both Central Province and Nuva provinces and ends at Mahiangana Grid substation. A part of the line around 2.6 kilometers traverses Rentu Hilly area and the balance runs through paddy fields and crosses the Mahueli River. The line route was surveyed using CEV owned equipment and CEV staff. Line profile design and power spotting were also done by CEV staff.
required instructions and guidance during erection were provided by the staff of CEC. This line has 67 towers including two terminal towers at Mahing Dana Jertsit Station and Renton Britsit Stations. The line has 19 angle towers out of those 67 towers. Terminal tower at Mahing Dana Britsit Station is TDT type and that at Renton GS is TDT plus 06. TD1, TD3 and TD6 towers are also in the design in addition to TDL towers. Soil investigation tests were carried out for all the tower locations. Accordingly, foundation types are selected. One of the difficult tasks we encountered at the beginning is marking for way leaves in the wildlife area. Our officers and other staff finished this event at the beginning very quickly with whatever the difficulty they met in the jungle. Way leaves are removed by three separate parties. Trees in government lands with economic value by state timber cooperation. Trees in private lands with economic value by landowners. Compensations are paid to tree owners by CEP. Trees in private lands and government lands but no economic values and reluctant to get removed through owners are removed by stringing and tractor. For such removals, contractor was paid by CEV. Construction work of the line was mainly carried out in different phases such as construction of foundations, tower erection and stringing of conductors and earth wires. In the meantime materials were procured through separate tenders such as tower studs, tower materials, insulators, hardware and accessories, conductors and earth wires, OPGW and accessories etc. Tenders are also invited for foundation erection, erection of towers and stringing of conductors. Tower stubs and conductors were procured in Sri Lanka and tower materials and earth wires were imported from India. Towers were tested in presence of CEP inspectors. OPGW and insulators, hardware and accessories were imported from China. The total material procurement cost is rupees is 254. Construction of tower foundations were done through three separate contracts. From Renton to Ambega Hapalesa by Valence Engineering Company and the Hapalesa to Moriaya by Engineering Laboratory Services Private Limited and Moriaya to Mahiangana GS by Lanka Creative Private Limited. As scheduled it took seven months time to complete tower foundations between Ambiopolesa and Mahiangana Gritsit Station. However in between Ambega Hapalesa and Renton Gritsup Station it took almost one year time to complete tower foundations due to unexpected time consumption for retaining wall construction at few tower locations and head carrying involvement in the hilly area. The total foundation construction cost is rupees 109 millions. 
power erection was done through three separate contracts. The two contracts, from the Hyanganic Ripsip Station to Ambega Hapalesa, are done by Lanka Creative Company Private Limited and from Ambega Hapalesa to Renton Ripsip Station is done by Balance Engineering Private Limited except the three closest towers to Renton Ripsip Station that are erected by Transmission Construction Prince. Unexpectedly auxiliary cross arm of the terminal tower had to modify to suit the tower and entry locations and that was done by the staff of transmission construction prints. Again the tower erection work is delayed unexpectedly due to the same reasons as in the construction of foundations and completed in December 2012 the total cost of tower erection is rupees 17 millions. Stringing tools including tensioners and pullers are hired from DGM, Transmission Construction, Wrench and DGM, Owen Miz, Wrench and final total hiring cost was rupees 11 millions. Ringing of conductors in this line started in January and ended up in May 2013. Stringing of conductors and earth wires in the entire line was done through two separate contracts. However, both contracts were done by joint venture of George Stewart's Private Limited and Maverick Engineering Private Limited at Sri Lanka to the total cost of rupees 48 million. Required instructions and guidance during conductor stringing were provided by the staff of CEP. During line construction works at different stages crops of people are damaged and they are compensated by CEP. Finally compensation to the lands where towers are occupied are also paid to landowners by CEP. Total actual construction cost of this 21 km long transmission line is rupees 430 million, which is less than the estimated cost, which is rupees 525 million. The actual per kilometer cost is worked out to be rupees 21 million. However current day cost of construction of similar transmission line on turnkey basis is around rupees 15 million, which is considerably higher when compared to this cost. This is an incredible achievement of all of us starting from project manager to unskilled laborers who engaged in construction of this line from CEP side as well as contractors side due to their hardiest effort to make this task success.